Louis, would you like to uh, tell us about the um, uh, your, your 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 key ideas now about security, about identity, in the context of today's Mexico? Yes. Well, my ideas, if if there are something interesting, are produced during fifty years of of experiments. Um, and uh, through all these uh, grassroots experiments, I realized that there are three common challenges in general. How to discover your I life identity? What kind of identity is important for you even to give your life to this identity? Life and death are the same face of the coin. No? You have two dimensions of the coin, life and death. And uh, identity is very important. How to have a, a name, how to have a language, how to have a, uh, ideals, and how to have a, a be believings and, and uh, behaviors. So, individually and, uh, so, and uh, collectively. So, uh, I'm Mexican, for instance, is part of my identity. But uh, before that, I'm Mesoamerican, not only Mexican, because my, my, my being is formed through original cultures, pre-Hispanic culture. But at the same time, I'm taking advantage of the culture that came later from uh, Europe, Hispanic uh, culture. So I'm speaking Spanish, not English, not French. No? So identity is very important to discover it and to keep it uh, uh, as an important uh, challenge for life. Another challenge is sustainability. How do you behave in order to have a livelihood? How can you eat? How can you have a health? How can you have a, 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 a tools in order to, to live? Tools or uh, means or t technologies. <coughs> I was born in, 30, in 1935. At that time, uh, cars were part of the life to have a car for the, the, the common people or to have a, a, a collective transportation by b buses. No. I was born in a city, not in the rural area. So my behavior and my, so my livelihood was formed by the city. So, I was a student, I was a uh, university, and then I was an architect. So this is the part of sustainability in order to have a, <coughs> a way of life, to have income, to have uh, uh, resources, money. So sustainability is very important. So we have to a second challenge. The first one is identity. The second one is sustainability. And the third one is how to, how to keep your life safe, safety, security. How to, because there are a lot of danger in the cities or in the rural areas. They are uh, robbers, they are, uh, uh, dangers, uh, they are a lot of risky situations. How to keep your, your identity and keep your behavior in a safety way? You, you have to keep uh, your life in a house. So uh, you have to find a, a shelter 
no? that provides you security. Why do we have keys in our in our pocket. pop in our pocket. pockets? Keys provide you security. Otherwise, you can be invaded in your house by night and to be kidnapped, for instance. So, so security is an individual challenge, but also a collective challenge. So identity, sustainability, and security are very important. Identity first deals with culture. Sustainability deals first with economics. And uh, security first deals with politics. So we have to combine culture, economy, economy and politics. This is the challenge. <coughs> How to combine these three challenges and measures in order to be happy. And unfortunately, in this world now, nobody is happy. <laughs> Everybody is concerned about identity, security, sustainability. Despite all the politicians and all the, the entrepreneurs that are offering a lot of products, services, messages, but people is always uh, uh, unhappy. Of course, we cannot be happy when 60% of the populations in Mexico now are living in poverty. And 30% <coughs> is living <coughs> in misery, without uh, money, without jobs, without uh, health uh, services, without uh, knowledge, without uh, uh, school. So we have a terrible challenge, despite all the efforts that we have made during 50 years in my life, and probably a century of progress in the world. So we have to be very, very clear that now we are in a challenge that is uh, very important. For instance, the, the, the environment. Economically, the economy is destroying the, the environment. In order to produce uh, industrial products, it's, it's, it's taking, uh, taking uh, materials from the earth and then transforming them into products, but the, the nature is losing balance. And now we have this uh, climate challenge changing the environment. I'm coughing constantly because I'm breathing a terrible uh, environment. And I'm condemned for life to have here in my breath, in my, in my pulmones, how do you say pulmones? In my lungs. In my lungs, minerals. I have minerals inside, very particular par particles of minerals that cannot talk, <coughs> expel them. They are not biology, bi biological, they are minerals inside and my body cannot expel them. So constantly I'm coughing without solution. But uh, there are a lot of diseases produced by, by a bad environment. Uh, and diseases also. So how to recover nature? I think this is the, the main challenge, to, re to answer to the challenge of identity, security, sustainability, but together with nature. 
<coughs> we have to learn how nature reproduces itself. So we have to study nature. Probably we have to shift from politics and economics to biology to rediscover ourselves in, the ter in terms of biological terms. And I think we are in this challenge. How life is produced without the illusions of the, of the men, without illusions, but with uh, knowledge on biology. And uh, I think uh, we should study that, not only theoretically, but practically. And life, what is life? Life is love. Is love. Eros is the name of love in, in Greek. No? Well, we have to be alive dealing with life. How to be generous, how to love each other, how to share, how to be solidarity with others. And we have lost this quality of human. We have now a, a DNA, a DNA uh, that is terribly violent, destroying environment and destroying the humanity because we lost the biological perspective. Uh, we are very ideological on progress, ideological in terms of power, but we lost uh, life. Uh, and uh, the ideology is sometimes a little uh, fails because is offering us only struggles, competition, for instance, and not cooperation. And life is a combination of cooperation with uh, some type of, uh, of efforts that is not exactly to compete, but to share and to cooperate. We have to learn about that. And we have, we have <coughs> experimented many, many strategies. In the past, originally, I was linked with uh, trade unions. How to foster the, the work of people in a capitalistic uh, uh, framework and trade union was a, a measure to organize trade unions. But la later I, re I realized that uh, it was not enough. Uh, that trade unions were, uh, were corrupted by the system in order paternalizing the, uh, the laborers, the, the, the workers, and controlling them with uh, corrupted uh, tools the politicians corrupting the trade union movement. So I, th I thought that we should add another type of, of uh, strategies. <coughs> I shifted from trade union to cooperative. A lot of people has no work, has no trade union. Much more people is outside the trade union movement than uh, the labels in the trade union. So cooperativism was another effort I, I learned in order to, to organize uh, enterprises and to organize uh, uh, freedom in, on, on the productivity effort. But at the same time, <coughs> the system was very clever in order to co-opt the cooperatives and to create a sort of capitalistic cooperativism. And so we couldn't, uh, we couldn't accept that. So trade unions and cooperatives were co-opted by the system, very violently or very corruptively. So in the, in the, in the, in the 60s and 70s, we realized that we're, we were facing another kind of third world. First Vietnam and later Central America. <coughs> <coughs> uh, 
and we were uh, uh, sympathizers with the indigenous people that were uh, were claiming for freedom and for keeping their uh, particular or communal resources and they were attacked by 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 the armies and then we decided to to fight with them i'm talking about not only in a very peaceful way but also through the guerrilla the guerrilla efforts and again we realized that uh, if you take the uh, the weapons in order to defend your uh, your properties and your communities you are also <coughs> <coughs> taken by the weapons and the weapons in, in introduces in your life another kind of violence you have to kill in order to survive but killing is very difficult to de to decide who is the enemy because the enemy is facing in a very mimetic way is masking their their identity so probably you are killing your your partner and sometimes the difficulties between the <coughs> <coughs> difference in the strategies produce the killing of the people among the people, the same people. So also the, the guerrilla was not an, an answer. So if trade unions or cooperative unions and guerrilla unions cannot resolve, what is the solution? And we, we shifted into another perspective. We, we struggle locally but we need to realize that we are in a globalization process. We have to lead, deal, to lead, or to deal, or to link the local efforts with a global, a global perspective, a new vision of, of this planet that is not capitalist. At that time, the Soviet Union went down. I'm talking in '89. So, the, another globalization was failure, fail, a failure, and the capitalistic still continue alive. So, how can we deal with a globalization that is based on competition and greed, and how can transform it <coughs> into a new way of life, local and global? And this is the real challenge we are facing now. How to avoid to this, the destruction of the planet through the, this, uh, this uh, destruction of nature? And how to avoid the division or the conflict between the left and the right? And to go beyond this challenge, killing ourselves. And we have adopted a... a a slogan, how to change without looking for power. This is a, a slogan that was coined by the, an Irish, Irish scientific uh, intellectual, John Holloway, that is teaching here at the Puebla University. How to change society and without, and without taking power. Because uh, all we have heard until now is we have to take power in order to change. But you are not taking power. The power is taking you. <laughs> so we have to look ways that are not looking for power, are looking for love. Uh, how we can translate this beautiful word, love, into situations, into experiments into new fraternities <coughs> because even the family is already taken by the capitalist it's, it's important to read uh, the sometimes i said i'm more i am more Engelian than Marxian. 
because Engels was talking about how the family was created in order to keep power, territorial power, and uh, creating the state through the, 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 the goods that the family are ke keeping. So, so how to discover that we can create families based not in property, but in love? And this is a terrible challenge. Well, terrible not, but it's a beautiful challenge without no clear <laughs> responses. <laughs> How to become brotherhood or sisterhood without property? Because at this moment, property is dividing us. Any kind of property. Uh, industrial properties, uh, uh, mass media properties, territorial properties. How to how to avoid that? I, I have I still a clear response, but I think it's part of this <coughs> of this challenge. I think I have, I have to rest a little. Eh?